STV, votre télé. Thanks for joining us on this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Coming up in this newscast, Clément Atangana and 10 other members of the Constitutional Council have taken the oath into office this Tuesday morning in the first ever Congress that grouped the two houses of Parliament in the hemicycle. The pioneer members of the Council have promised to exercise their duties with impartiality honesty, discretion, and to ensure the strict respect of the laws of the country. Women's Day 2018, less than 48 hours to the celebration of the International Women's Day, some women in Douala have been schooled on ways to keep their hearts healthy. Details straight ahead. Good afternoon once more and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Like mentioned some seconds in our headlines, the 11 members of the Constitutional Council headed by Clément Atangana have taken the oath into office this Tuesday morning in Yaoundé. This in the first ever Congress that grouped the two houses of parliament in the hemicycle. The pioneer members of the council appointed by presidential decree have accepted uh, to, uh, to discharge their duties diligently and faithfully in accordance with the constitution, uphold confidentiality of deliberations and voting, and also to remain honest and keep uh, the respect of to straight respect of the country's institution and the laws. The oath taking ceremony that was presided over by the Congress Chairman Kavaye Yegui Jibri. We shall be having details of uh, that uh, oath taking ceremony in our subsequent editions of the news. Something else in this new scars, newly appointed members of uh, government appointed on the 2nd of March, uh, having commissioned into their respective uh, offices by Prime Minister Philemon. Young. The installation ceremony in Yaoundé Monday was an opportunity to stress on the need for close collaboration with employees and full commitment in office. Details with Lionel Apadje. The instructions are the same for all 10 ministers, two minister delegates and one secretary of state installed this March 5th into their functions by Prime Minister Philemon Yang. Working environment should be characterized by team spirit collaboration and devotedness in order to achieve general and specific objectives of each ministry. The first to be installed at 8.30 a.m. following presidential nomination of March 2nd is the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, who replaces Rene Emmanuel Sadi now serving at the Presidency of the Republic. The latest cabinet reshuffle has seen the creation of the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development headed by Elanga Obam George. With the much talked about decentralization process in Cameroon, he will have the daunting task to ensure its effective implementation. Louis Paul Motaze and Alamin Usman May are now occupying each other's previous seats. Louis Paul Motaze, now in charge of the state coffers, will have to work in close collaboration with Alamin Usman May, who has been charged with economic planning and regional development alongside his minister delegate Paul Tasson. Jules Doret Ndongo leaves the former Ministry of Territorial Administration and Decentralization as minister delegate to take over from Gole Philip Ngwese in the management of Cameroon's forest. Nalova Lyonga Pauline Egbe has taken over from Gale Bibehe as minister of secondary education while he has also been fully installed as Minister of Transport after the exit of Edgar Alem Mebengo from the government. Minister of Water and Energy Resources Elundu Esumba Gaston, Secretary of State in the Ministry of Public Works in charge of roads, Njondom Ahmad, Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reforms Joseph Lee, Minister Delegate in the Ministry of External Relations in charge of the Commonwealth Mbayu Felix, 
have all taken office this March 5th and will stay as long as the President of the Republic deems it necessary. A film mark has been awarded to the dismissed cabinet members of the young government. Their political and economic balance sheet, according to an economist, is not encouraging. Lainita Pajia Mongwa once again. Edgar Aleme Bengo, former Minister of Transport. Atangana Kuna, former Minister of Water and Energy Resources. Michelle Ange Angwin, then Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reforms. Angole Philip Ngwese, formerly in charge of the Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife, are ministers of the young government that have been scraped off completely. For those who have been simply moved from one ministry to another, especially the key players of Cameroon's economy who have been swapped, have been criticized for wrong predictions of the country's economic growth rate. I think it's the worst, the worst achievement in the past 25 years because all the failures have been predicted. Now they blame the fall in oil prices for the economic difficulties. But it was predictable that oil prices were going down. They have re adapted the government, the country, without a proper re adaptment strategy. Now the, the public debt, external debt, has gone up four folds. Since we achieved the uh, PPT in 2010, which is uh, called the uh, English EPIC. The political balance sheet of the dismissed cabinet members has not been very positive. It is a, a, a Mr. Paul Bia, he is implementing a traditional strategy. Instead, I believe that this team, he has selected four or five people, team of four or five people. That will be the transition team. Meantime, the last cabinet reshuffle before that of March 2nd, 2018, was two years, four months ago. The head of state, President Paul Bia, has created a ministry to tackle decentralization and local development issues in the country. This comes at a time when the process is being marred by certain factors. The ministry is therefore expected to meet the present challenges and ensure that local councils also have a say in the development agenda. Peter Susi reports. At a time when local development across the country has been timid, resulting in growing frustration from the masses, the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development is born. Carved out from the former Ministry of Territorial Administration and Decentralization, Pundits believe the March 2018 ministerial outfit translate the head of state's desire to fast track decentralization as enshrined in the 1996 constitution. Since 2004, when the decentralization laws were produced, government says it has made what it calls significant strides in the decentralization process. The creation of monitoring bodies such as the National Decentralization Council, the Inter-Ministerial Committee on Local Services, and the Inter-Community Intervention Fund FACOM was followed by the transfer in 2010 of competences and resources. By 2015, deadline for the full transfer, government claimed it had effectively dissolved 60 out of 63 competencies across 20 ministries to local and city councils, representing 97% of the transfer process. Within the same period, nearly 600 billion francs CFA was paid to local authorities. Despite the strides made towards the process, government has always come under fire for voluntarily impeding the decentralization process in the country. An argument on the lack of resources and competencies advanced by the government has not been convincing in the ears of mayors and other elected officials. Growing conflicts between local and city councils over the right to taxes from certain facilities and the overwhelming influence of administrators on local councils are now daily realities of the process. From government's viewpoint, the newly created ministry is telling evidence from Yaoundé to promote local governance through specific actions which must be implemented at the legal, institutional and operational levels.
At the legal and institutional levels, the ministry must finalize regulatory text concerning the status of local staff and elected officials, as well as the functioning of regional councils, which will clearly draw a line between the competences of local bodies and the central state. The Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development is at the operational level expected to ensure effective financial autonomy for regional and local councils. The Anglophone crisis has for close to two years raised big questions on the efficiency of the process, but it is clear that the head of state has likely shut the door at calls for federalism with the stroke of his pen last Friday. In the Northwest region, the newly appointed military officials have been urged to execute their tax with efficiency, professionalism, sacrifice, and patriotism. Instructions from the Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense, Joseph Betty Asomo, as he installed officials of the newly created 5th Gendarmerie region in Baminda yesterday Monday. Love and Bear has the details. Five newly appointed military officials in the Northwest region have been commissioned into their new post of responsibilities. The commissioning and handing over ceremony was presided over by the Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense, Joseph Betia Somo, who called on the newly appointed, who to him have just regained the head of state's confidence to execute their duty with efficiency, professionalism, sacrifice and patriotism. The appointment follows a presidential decree signed on February 21st and March 1st by the head of state States, creating new military regions. The newly created military regions include the Fit Combined Military Region with General Anna Robinson as commander, the Fit Gendarmerie Region commanded by Jules Caesar, the 51st Motorized Infantry Brigade commanded by Colonel Pang Jem Michel, the 501 Air Force Base with Colonel Kenneth Akwe Azuma as commander, the 51st Military Engineering Regiment Corps with General Jume Charles as commander, and the Fit Firefighters group with Lieutenant Commander Peter Tuapufong Egard as commander. To have uh, Lieutenant Commander Peter Tuapufong Egard is the new 50th Fire Brigade group. I'm so grateful because the head of state has renewed his confidence in me, giving me the opportunity to come and help the population of the West and Northwest. It is a great task and a very motivating task. The SF chairman, Nijon Frunzi, who was present during the ceremony, is hoping that the newly appointed shall go down to the feet to supervise what their junior colleagues are doing. I hope that the minister coming to all the senior officials, senior officials, to supervise what their boys are doing. Because the commit crimes here run the way they come and shoot all the people here in the department group, to steal money and carry people to their people. The minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense used the occasion to extend the head of state sympathy and comfort to the families of the two officials who were kidnapped in Batibo. The newly appointed have been called to communicate with the population in a language they will understand in order to win the hearts of the people of the northwest region. The second phase of a campaign to register eligible voters into the electoral register in the Douala 5 municipality has been launched in the Makepe Misoke neighborhood here in the economic capital Douala. The campaign championed by the Douala 5 municipality also intends to facilitate the withdrawal of cards. Henry Wana. After spending a successful two weeks at different markets within the Douala 5 municipality to preach the importance of every eligible Cameroonian to exercise his or her civic responsibility in taking part at elections due to who this year, the caravan gets into its second phase this March 5, 2018 with Makepe Misoke as their very first stop. Alors nous avons commencé aujourd'hui l'étape des villages. C'est pour ça que vous voyez le chef est mobilisé. We are today beginning the second phase of our campaign in the different neighborhoods. That's why you see traditional rulers as well as quarter heads and other actors have all answered present here to assist us in this project. Makepe Misoke, you know, is a seat of multitude of CPD militants. Thus, we shall be moving from door to door within the next four days our team has to spend here to permit us to register as many voters in the electoral register. I hope we meet our target at the end of this exercise.
Nous aurons le plus grand nombre d'inscrits dans le vote. However, a similar exercise will continue after Makepe Misoke to enable the Elekam team get as many voters as possible residing in the over 53 neighborhoods that make up the Douala 5 municipality before the election bells start ringing. Less than 48 hours to the celebration of the International Women's Day in Cameroon, some women in the city of Douala have been schooled on ways to keep their hearts healthy. This was doing a spot walk in the presence of Litoa Governor. John Paul Sama completes that story. In prelude to this year's celebration of the International Women's Day, activities have hit top gear in the Litoa region as hundreds of women and men turned out this Sunday in Bonanjo Douala to take part in the march organized by the Delegation of Women's Empowerment and the Family alongside Fondation Camerounaise du Coeur. Le fait de la marche permet de protéger le cœur, la santé cardiovasculaire. Ça permet de régler Works le stress. Like this one permit Ça permet de lutter contre l'obésité, la and also stress, la santé cardiovasculaire as well as fighting against obesity. It is important that sport becomes part and parcel of our daily lives, and a 30-minute daily workout is highly recommended because this has been proven to reduce the rate of cardiovascular diseases. The march, which was highly attended by top government officials of the region, headed by Governor Samuel Diodoné Vahadiboa, got off with some physical exercises before the 80 kilometers walk through the city an event deemed successful by its patron. Sport is very important for our health, and I can say it was a great success. The match was concluded with some light warm-up and demonstrations on how a person suffering from cardiac arrest can be given first aid treatment before being transported to the hospital, as well as some medical examinations carried out on the spot. Sport football in this newscast, a total of 13 goals have been scored in the MTN Elite One Championship in March Day 5 this Sunday in Stadia across the country. This coupled with some prolific victories at home and away. John Paul Sama with the preview of those games. It was another blissful weekend in the MTN Elite One Championship which recorded scintillating results for the teams in contention. Young Sport Academy of Bamenda continues their superb form in the league with a 1-0 victory at home over Unisport of Bafang, courtesy of a penalty converted from the sport by Festus Quinty, a decision which is hardly contested by the coach of Unisport. This victory for Young Sport Academy of Bamenda means five games played, two victories, three draws, and no goal conceded in over seven hours of football this season. UMS of Loom leapfrogged to the first spot on the table following a 2-0 win away to Yaoundé Foot, thanks to Cedric Jegwe, who opened his account of the season, and Victus Amugui. Astro Football Club of Douala, the other unbeaten team in the league, held Coton Sport of Garwa at the Moliko Municipal Stadium to a goalless draw, an encounter which was marked by the sending off of Enes Sombo and the injury sustained by Coton's keeper. Union of Douala ended the invincibility of future football club of Jiko Banjun with a 2-0 victory over them, while Colombe du Sud got her first win of the campaign against Dragon of Yaoundé. New Stars Football Club of Douala got to winning ways following a 2-1 win in post on visiting Renard of Melong in Limbe, and for the fourth game this season, Bambutu's Football Club of Buddha have failed to register a goal as they were urged 1-0 by RS Fortuna in Yaoundé. In the game, Fovu Football Club of Baham versus current defending champions Edding Spore of the Lake, it was Fovu who took the lead through Christian Jumo, but Edding Spore came from behind for the second game running through Christian Bayemi to salvage a point for the visitors. The Baron goalless run for Egle Royal of the Menwa continued over the weekend as they are yet to register a goal and a win in this season's championship following a virgin tie against Apeje Somfu, a point accredited to the superb form of goalkeeper Herman Tala. After March Day 5, 
UMS of Loom, Young Sport Academy of Bamenda, and IS Fortuna occupied the top three positions with nine points each, while Egle, Apeges, and Yafut animate the relegation zone. That report brings us to the end of this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Thanks very much for watching and stay on STV for more news and entertainment. Good afternoon. STV. Votre télé. Retrouvez le débat sur les grands enjeux sociaux, économiques et politiques. Donc, je n'ai pas eu l'impression que les Camerounais ont cessé de faire une carrière dans les caisses de l'État. Et c'est très dangereux pour nous. Les faits, les commentaires et l'analyse avec les politiques avisées et les spécialistes pertinents. Lorsqu'on fait un stade, on construit un stade de demi-place. Carte sur table, tous les mardis à partir de 22h sur STV. Rue du Fusion, vendredi 13h30. In this story, I'm a boy, what gear five? My day more fly, you tell them she zip go fly. The Friday night, love, lust, broken trust. Story of my bright lies, see my she equal class, but kugonga nishi champagne glass. On STV, your TV.